Okay, crew, let's get... Oh, hey, Kaz. Let's get to work. Uh. And did someone just get home? I'm sure it's fine. If anything, they'll just knock on my door. Okay. <clears throat> first things first. And let's run the... Uh, run.sh. Let's run the bot test just to make sure things are okay. Bot test. Um, why don't you just get into an arts and crafts group that isn't women only? Okay, so all our code's fine and nothing's broken. All right, so let's talk about what we're doing today. Um, oh my God, it's hot today. It's hot. I regret opening my window. Oh, damn. Okay. Oh. And let me close my window. I thought because it's windy outside, some of the wind would come in here. Um, but I guess not. I'll open my door here. Ah, uh, that's better. Um, but I will hope that my cat doesn't come in and terrorize the stream. Like she's started doing to me every night now. Okay. So, what are we doing? Let's look at our to-do list. It's hot because it's Australia. It's summer. All right. So... We want to be able to write some data to a string. So I guess we've kind of written here the things that we want. We have write character to string. Um, we have write string. And then we have, um, this is more like, yeah, write string. So, um, Pointer length. That's more like string copy. Um, then we have right number. Um, we will have to specify um, how many digits of padding we will have to have there. Um, that's going to be the most trickiest. Um, also, the division instruction on 8086 isn't good. So, uh, It's quite easy to write hex numbers, but not quite easy to write decimal numbers. Um, because when you write a hex number, you just shift it and then you like, you have the second digit or whatever. But with uh, binary, oh, 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 hang on. Something's coming up in my head. My brain, I, I remember something vaguely. Could this be where the string instructions from Intel help? Let's open up the assembly language manual. Let's see, it's something about ASCII characters. I, I vaguely remember this. A, it should probably begin with A. A. Move, not, no, we're looking for ASCII. <clears throat> um, there's add with carry, that's not it. Um, multiply. We probably want to look for decimal adjust. Okay. ASCII adjust for multiply. What does that mean? ASCII adjust for divide. Let's open up the actual manual. And let's look for ASCII. It's trying hard. Oh. ASCII adjust for addition. Um, ASCII adjust for multiply, ASCII adjust for division. So I think this is just taking in an ASCII letter and it doesn't explain what it does. Maybe 
it explains up here. Xlat. Ask you just for add. Well, let's quickly search this up. Drink some tea. ASCII adjust for multiply. I think this just would subtract the number. Bin uh, BCD values to compare. All right. So BCD is not what we're dealing with here. We will probably just be looking for mull or div, probably div, right? Um, is there like a div mod? Or are we going to have to multiply and divide? Whatever, we won't worry about it for now. I guess we will worry about it because despite saying that I'm still clicking going through the page. Um, division. We have string instructions. Are they going to be useful here? Um, so the thing that I thought about here is um, we're going to start with our string I S I and then give it some other thing here. Um, like D I C X right car. Um, AX, things like that, and that will operate on in, but we also have to create a backup of the original string pointer to print. So we'd probably have to be like um, push string, pop string, like that. Um, we will also need to carry an error through all this. So like, I, I think this could be done just by, I don't know, um, how would you do an error? Would we carry an error flag? I think the best way to set it would just to be set um, CX to zero or something like that. Because, you know, you're out of, you're out of space to write. Anyway, so for this case, print format outgoing, we would um, print a string, then a space, then a number, then a character, then a space, then a number, oh no, a string. I don't know why it's got like a dot. Oh, that remembers the trailing null. I think. Um, we should also probably have erase character, right? Or rewind. So we can go back in the, in the buffer. Um, that's actually something you can't really, I don't see too much in C or whatever. I guess this is more of a string builder thing, right? Where we're joining together operations to make a string. So we're going to make a string builder library. I'm also not sure why we have optional instructions or decision instructions here. I think that's just from parsing because that sounds like parsing shit. Sorry, I don't want to get angry at people or swear at them because they're, this is a PG stream. Okay, so let's start with some tests. Um, and this is going to be a little bit easier because we already kind of have um, some of the same stuff. You allowed one, Oh, am I? Is that how it works? I thought there's supposed to be like parental guidance. Hey kids, you got your parents in the room? Tell them to go to infowars.com. <laughs> is that PG? Is it PJ? Is it PG to be like advocating extreme horrible shit just as long as you don't use swears? That's something that's always kind of weirded me out about swear words. Like you can say swear words and then they're like, I guess they're offensive, but then you can say extremely horrible stuff without swears. And that's, that's still not okay, but like, 
it's how they get around violence. I mean, I don't know. I try to look at the intent of what people are saying. I don't know if that's like a, a centrist opinion. You know, I'm so high and mighty that I look at what people actually mean. Um, ah, my mother's home. Oh, shit. Okay. So let's change the pause here to string. I'll just do it manually. So test string. I do gives mum. Um, what? I'm also going to call it string.object and this will be um, test string. So I might have to mute myself for a second. Um, okay, one second. Okay, I'm back. So, um, yeah, not my brother went on a flight to somewhere else in Australia. And the flight back has been cancelled because extreme winds. Um, so now we have to deal with that. And um, it's a bit of a wrench in my personal life because that means I have to wait a little bit for my bike to get fixed. It's, it's possibly the end of the world, actually. Um, I want a refund of some sorts. I'll tell you about my bike issues in a second, but let's just try and get some files together and compile this. So we have our test string and we have our pass. Let's just make that pass.nas, uh, string.nas. And let's just make sure this compile, uh, we'll have to also edit, we have to copy pass and make that, uh, I guess, string.bat. If I'm going to be doing a lot of tests, I'm going to have to figure out something better than this eventually, right? Um, okay, so let's do string. Mm -hmm. All good. So yeah, my bike issue is I, the front derailleur on it was, I messed it up by, t by moving it and I couldn't get it back into place. So I took it to a bike shop and they put a different derailleur on it that has more clearance <coughs> and it looks a lot better, but, um, it's still having trouble shifting. Now I'm pretty bad at fixing bikes as shown by the fact that I had to take it to a bike shop. But I have the feeling they didn't like um, index the front derailleur. Because that's, that's something I, I can do. Um, I, can, I can index a derailleur, I just can't position it in very tight tolerances. All right, let's edit our test string. So once again, oh my God, we are dealing with another issue because in assembly, I keep using multiple return values, but C doesn't support that. So I think we might have to just keep a struct for um, builder data. So we have character, um, how the hell do I do this? Okay. Builder data, character, um, string, unsigned, short, length. Uh, and let's call this string string. That's not confusing at all, is it? I'm actually just going to take a quick second to think of anything better to call this.
Any suggestions from the audience would be better too. Because it kind of looks like I have... I mean, string data could work better, perhaps. Bruce... String string? And uh, I'll go with string string. And pass spunk would be... What the hell is pass spunk? Oh, right. So... The pass funk would be the string funk. Call string function struct string string. Once we get these tests done, well, we might actually have to start putting this together into an actual test suite. So we're going to call string function. Um, once again, if you're familiar with any type of functional programming, this is a monad. This is exactly what a monad is. Um, except like, um, I, is it a monad? Because I'm not using bind. I guess this is like map. Yeah, I think this is maybe F map. I don't know. Yeah, it's not a monad. The parser was a monad. This is a map. Okay, so when we call the string function, we give it a string string and we're going to move. What registers are we going to choose for this? Um, let's go back to our um, code bot string. Why do I have that at the top of the test bot pass? code bot pass yeah we have to remove that junk at the top so call convention um i guess we're going to have ahl input output registers so we should also set that as i mean we're also going to have to have um Read and write. Yeah, so this is a bit more complicated. Um, we're not going to use flags for failure because that was a bad, bad idea. We're also not going to store any data in this. Um, so, calling convention. Hang on a second. I'm back. It seems like this stream is actually trying to uh, really um, get rid of me, if anything. Um, let's undo this. We might just steal the same calling convention. Um, we have in out, we have read and we have write. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so let's just steal that. Um, does this vim not do? It would be undo 16. Undo list, maybe it's undo seven. No, it's uh, let's just call it builder builder funk builder data builder funk. We should also just write that this is AX um Do we want to try and optimize so we can use the string functions? Let's see, what, what do we have here? We have, um, there's the SI, which would be, our right string would be DI. Um, that would be DX, I think. And DI, and this would be SI and CX, however, 
we're going to have to look at the loop or whatever, like mob string. What does mob string do? We'd be looking at mobs, um, maybe compares, scans. We have load string, store string. So let's look at store string. So rep stores. Store, but uh, this manual is actually useless. Screw it. We're going to be looking it up online. Um, x86 stores. I think this stream is trying to get like very bad luck for everything because um, I just keep getting interrupted. Okay, the stores stores a byte or word, respectively, into the destination register, and that's e um, ESDI. Um, so yeah, DI stores it, and we have LODs, we have mobs, let's look at the mobs thing, x86. This search bar hates screen readers. Okay, mobs, SI to DI. Does that change any of the counter registers? I mean, I guess if it doesn't change our counter registers, then we have a problem because this is completely useless. It does not. So all these are useless to us because we would have to, you know, mobs and whatever anyway. So, um, but we will still use, I guess we'll use our convention from before. Um, BX, CX. This will be CX and BX. I don't remember why we um, did it this way. BX is red, CX, right, whatever. Um, I guess we've made our perhaps stringy monad thing. And we have all this, we don't have to change this um, call builder function. Um, then we have all this pragma orc stuff. Don't know why it's up here. Um, and then we have our tests here. So let's, do we have any more? That's, that's test data. We're not going to be doing tests as complicated as that. And we also have AHAL, which we'll have to put, um, up here. Um, parser data. Let's find parser data, builder data. Parser builder, just complete that everywhere. Let's look for pass or build funk. Okay. So let's. To delete, why don't we have like a macro thing there? Do these have pass test here? Why don't these ones? I guess they're like, oh yeah, those call do pass, okay. So pass build, I guess we'll call them string. Hey DPA, what's up? Now we don't need the do pass star. Um, we're going to then comment out all this stuff. String test. 
I'm going to put this here. And we will make a function that does nothing. So global. Um, what are we going to call this? Let's say. Nice. That is good. Why do I have two Vims open? This is always confusing. Am I editing this? Yeah. Code test test string. All right. So let's edit the to do over here. So we need um, push, we need write character. Test write character normal. And this will be, will this be write? Are we gonna write, call it write character? Should we, I'm not namespacing any of this shit. Um, I guess it would be string write. Um, string write character. I guess we can just call it write character. What else is going to use this terminology? So write character. Um, test write character normal. So what should we do? We want to write character H to our input, um, our buffer. Is it 12 PM our time? No, it's my time. Yeah. I don't know why I have my clock set. Uh, not 12 PM. Um, I don't know. It's, it's noon. All right, so first issue is that hmm. what is out? Okay, so we don't actually need to set a string here. So we're gonna set in out to H. I don't know why I'm casting that to a character. I'm gonna do right character. Should return zero. And we need to data out um, laying right minus equal one. And we want to assert that out zero is H. And we want to assert that right is incremented by one. So let's test that. Right car, probably cause incorrect spell. Don't do this to me, computer. Oh, global right character. And right character right now is just going to return. I do. Absolutely nothing. Syntax error before right character. Syntax error before right character on line 100. So it must be that. Let's just look how I did my test pass here. Um, perhaps I didn't do peak properly. All right, I guess. I guess we're gonna be having some more weird debugging headaches. Let's just comment that out for now. DPA, do you think Reen should just finally marry Elise?
It's been a will they, won't they situation for a long time. Um, there's also the carry flag, which we're not going to mess with. Push BP. Um, you don't need to touch the BP. I guess we do. Um, push F and AX1. Ah, uh, whatever, I'll just do that. Um, okay, so syntax error before right character. What if I comment this out? Same syntax error. So perhaps the problem is in the macro. Is it call pass function? Or builder. Pass, pass, pass. Maybe this was the issue. Your soup. Okay, listen here, you fucking piece of shit. Sorry, not you, the computer. The soup you make in your belly. Oh, don't, don't say that ever again. Oh no, don't say that. Syntax error. Okay. That should be build funk. Builder funk. So it's actually there. Macros are not helpful. Well, they are helpful, but they're hard to debug. All right. So we have a, we have our issue here. So. What we want to do now. Is have it so that this copies AL. to a h a l zero h there we go um so let's go to string dot nas and so we're just going to fix up this test and so we will do move di um i think it's al and then we will increment um what is it CX, oh no, decrement CX, and we will return. And in out does not equals 72. What? I moved, I moved it. What the fuck do you want from me? Oh, data in should be that. Mm -hmm. Data in. Data in out. I think that should be also be data out dot in out. So like that. Data dot data in dot right doesn't equal. So right should have incremented. That's right, I didn't do that. Oh, this is where I can use stosb al. I did it. We finally have a use for the string instructions. Perfect. We have right character. Um, 
you also need to avoid that if the um, writes a single character to a string. And then we have bool. So if the string is full, equals zero, then um, out once still equals zero. So you shouldn't do anything. In fact, it should be exactly the same. So no length, it's zero. So now what we have to do is we want to compare, um, I think it's CX zero. And we want to jump zero return. Right, our right character works. So we want to now do a right string, which is the same thing. Um, if I can find it, if I can find the page. Sorry, I'm a bit like lost today. So right, so this should be writes a single character. Um, writes a string. So what should write string do? Well, for now it's going to just return and do nothing. Test write string. Normal. Oh, we can just do write string. Write string right string so test right string normal writes a string to a string now this is actually going to be a little bit of a weird one to test because we have two failure cases on both strings so um fail one um I guess, I guess having empty string one is not a failure. Um, input string empty. I guess um, output string empty. Is there any more failures? Um, not enough room to copy. So what we will do is we'll get our string hello data in right i think this sets it yeah so this should just be fine um right string and then we have to use mem copy a uh, mem compare let's check the test pass and go string compare String compare, assert string compare. We want to assert string compare out word, word length. I guess that's what we'll do. Word has not been declared. Um, so that would be data in dot um, read data um, in dot write data. Um, this should also to do check updated. 
um, dot length. Check updated pointers plus lengths, which I'll do in a second. I don't know why I'm putting a to do there. Start it in dot read length. All right. So. Um, so data in dot data, data out dot length, um, right minus equal data in dot length read and data in dot length data out dot length read should be zero. So this should copy, um, H E L L O. So let's see if this works. Lean read, read len. Or some more T. Okay. So length read is not working. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our string.nas and we're going to do our mobs. I think it's rep mobs. Um, and CX, I think rep mobs uses CX as the read length. So we're going to have to push CX, move, um, move bx to cx then pop cx no we don't have to hmm. let's think about this mobs is going to copy and decrement cx to zero so cx which I actually mov bx to cx, I think. Now we need to swap those. x86 exchange. Can we do that? Can we use that as a swap? Swap register. So let's exchange BX and AX. And then let's exchange um, CX and um, BX and CX again. So now um, BX should be zero and CX. Oh, I know what to do. So we will subtract. Um, we will subtract VX from CX, I think. That will give us the final value. Then we will exchange BX and CX. And that will mean that um, CX will now be the read length and BX will be the final length. And then we will exchange them again. Let's see if that works. Instruction inspected. Should be mobs B. Did I expect to advance the input pointer too? That's interesting. I don't think I should have to expect it to. Why does it say data in read doesn't equals one, one, three, four. Is it because I'm comparing them? 
something weird is happening here. I think. Data out, length read. So the output length read should be zero. The output length right should be data in minus length read. And the um, then output dot right should be plus the input length read. But here it looks like data in dot read is not equals one one three four. It's one one three nine. Why is that? Is that because we've messed up the registers? Sounds like it could be. Let's try not subtracting stuff there. So we subtract BX from CX. And then we switch them around. So the original length is now CX and BX is now the right one. And then we repeat and then we swap it around. That should work, I think. But it says the read pointer. I guess it increments the read pointer. So it would consume the read pointer. Yeah, all right. Do we want that? Do we want it to consume our read pointer? I guess so. I mean, it consumes our um, thing too. Yeah, all right, so this is fine. So, um, empty input. And empty string to a string. And the input, length read equals to zero. And so we want to expect this to um, do nothing. Um, I expect this is gonna freeze the machine. Maybe, empty, yeah, input. It looks like it tried to write to something. Um, data dot length right. Data in, data out. Let's do data in, data. I guess we can just do that with like that. We can make that an empty string. Oh, does that actually work? Interesting. So my code here accidentally already works for that. So now output string doesn't have enough space. So let's say we do hello and we do data in dot write a string to an empty string. So data in dot length right should be a zero and data out dot length right should be a zero. So this should be empty output. Let's do that. So something weird happens there. The return actually overflows. 
Um, so we expect everything to be the same, um, but we tell it to have a right of zero. So let's see, I guess it would subtract that and then switch it around and then try and rep. I guess that would overwrite invalid memory. So let's compare this and then add the return. Now that works. And then we're going to write the string to a, write the long string to a small string. Hello world, this is a very long string. And we should expect that to be, what should we do there? Should we expect it to write until, should it do its best? Or should it stop? Should it avoid? I would say it should do its best. Yeah. Um, so what we would expect is um, length right. We would expect data outs. Hmm. Let's do string compare. Um, character. Do 16 there. Length red. Yeah. So we do length red. I'm, I'm a bit confused. So we have a very long string. We do, wait. Oh yeah, this is right string. Okay. I got confused for a second. Sometimes I get confused. So. With our right string there. Writes a very long string to a small string. So what do we expect? We expect it to just write something, but with a fixed length of length right. So length read. Length right should be data in dot length read. And data out dot write should plus in the length read. So it should only do that. And then we will compare that to data in dot right equals data in. Okay. Let's write string empty output. Did I get an error there? It's already been defined. Um, sorry. It'd be too long. So it should truncate it. And we will just, um, truncating if not enough room. So here we have compare CX zero. What we might want to do is compare CX and BX. Um, and then we want to jump if there's an overflow. I think. Maybe it's BX minus CX. Something like that. Um, and we'll just clear the carry flag. Uh, actually, no, we'll go back here. And the carry flag is not meant to. I mean, I guess we could set the carry flag on error. We also didn't test right character. Oh, we did. Right character full though, doesn't do a carry. Hmm. Let's just say that in this case, the carry flag should be set.
Oh, we can do jump less than zero there. Can we? No. Um, so I think that would be jump if the carry flag is set, if it underflows. So I guess we'll be using the carry flag to indicate errors. Length right doesn't equals 38. Instead we get 16. That's true, that's what we want. Data in dot length right should be, yeah, data out. Let's data in dot length right. So yeah, it should cap that. Right doesn't equal 63. So is right not set? Oh, that's right. Because, um, yeah, so it doesn't truncate it here. This is doing a check. So, mm hmm. Yeah, is there a way to like subtract it so that, um, I mean, if we're going to write a hundred into a 16 buffer, um, then I guess we would. We would have an extra thing here. So jump carry, jump not carry, go, and then go would be go, and then we compare it to zero. And then we do here, we, we do move CXBX maybe. I mean, this is all too complicated. Um, Let's not do that. Write the string erroring if there's no space. I mean, write the string if there's space. Um, yeah, return. Let me just clear the carry flag. And right shouldn't change. Actually, this shouldn't work at all. Length right should be. Yeah, so this shouldn't modify the input or output. There. Perfect. And that compare thing also. Um, you know, if it's zero, it'll just go ahead. So we have our string stuff. What next? We need our rewind, probably. We won't use, we won't add a rewind yet. Um... We will need push string and pop string. That's a macro. Rewind string is difficult because what if you haven't, what if you haven't written that much? So let's not worry about that. Push string, right carry, right string, right number, AX. So right number is where the pain begins. Um, but perhaps we should, Try using these functions already in the bot. Perhaps, no, let's do the, let's do the right number thing. So string test. Um, let's think about this. If we're going to write a number, how many did, how, how many free digits do we need? 
Are we going to pad it by default? Are we going to truncate it? Um, hmm. I think truncating, I think um, padding by default is easier because then you just divide it by the factor and then you keep going. So the maximum number that we'll have is six, five, five, three, six. So that's one, two, three, four, five digits. And this all assumes it's unsigned, which is a pain. Are we going to support signed numbers? Hmm. You think, you think I'm saying Trump, not truncated? Um, sorry, I'm just playing with something on my desk. My brain really doesn't want to think about numbers. So let me just put this down and we'll think about numbers. So we also want to be able to pad it to digits. But if it's longer than that, we want to. OK, so we want a. Play with stuff on my desk, we want right number. Um, AX and padding. So padding. When we're writing a number, what we want to do is start dividing it by factors of 10. Um, so in this case, we have a max number, which is six, five, five, three, six. So what we will do is we will divide by um, 10. No, we will divide by um, 10,000. Divide by 10,000. If padding equals um, one, two, three, four, five. Right, zero. Uh, right number, if not zero, if pad equals by right, then we just continue that. Oops, like that. And we don't need to divide by one. Um, so we'll start with 10,000. Um, We will divide by 10,000 to get the value. And then we will, I guess, divide by, yeah. So we would divide that by 10 or something. So 1,000, 10,000 divided by 10 or whatever. Now, how are we going to do this with signed numbers? Because um, we would have to write the sign before we write something else. So we would have to have Right sign. Um, possibly right sign. So we have our padding and we have our sign. Does this make sense so far? Please tell me it makes sense. Um, so what we might do is just try and implement this in Python first. Um, just because I, I need to, you know, this is, we, re we wrote it down on paper. I'm not ready for the assembly yet. A def um, num writer. So you want the number adding, and we will do. I guess we will make it a recursive. So write sign. Um, then we will do num writer. Print num writer. 
um, I guess would print 65536. Um, and the padding would be five. And we will write a sign if it's there. Um, negative 65536, write a sign, write that, no sign. And then we'll just cut that down to be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, then one, two, three. Um, and then that will be four. So that will give us some padding. And then we'll do 12. Uh, no padding at all. And then we'll do one with padding which should be like whatever. Um, and then we would have I guess we would also have um, divisor. The divisor there would be, we won't worry about the divisor. We'll just have like do, and this will be our recursive thing. So number, padding, right sign, um, div. So we would do return do, num, Adding right sign, and we'll start with 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I think that's 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we will return, then we'll return do that again. So new div um, will be divided by 10. New sign, um, we'll worry about that later. And we have the padding. Uh, padding, we would also have to track what digit we have. So padding would be like 10 to the power. Mm. How would we do padding? Um, we want we would want to be able to like easily check something. So we would want to convert padding to that number of digits. So that would be ten. Uh, ten to the power of uh, padding minus one, I think. Let's just go with that for now. So that would mean um, 10 to the power of one. So padding of zero should just be zero. 10 to the power of one. That would be that, okay. I know this code probably makes sen no sense to like anyone here, but just bear with me. Um, does Python have power? I don't know, it does. So we do the new divisor. If new divisor equals zero, uh, we just return. And we have our string too. Um, yeah, so string plus do. No. Okay, this is, this is too complicated. Let's just write it as a loop. We can, we can optimize it later. So we have our number of padding. So, um, adding can be our step, steps. And we have to keep track of how many steps we have. Um, we will do five steps. So, uh, for I in a range, one to five or is it five to one range five to one or i in range five to one print i you can't range backwards Maybe negative one, do you specify a step? 
like five, one, negative one. Yeah. So five, zero, negative one. Okay. So we will go from, we will step for each digit. Um, and then we will do, um, we will start with divisor equals one, two, three, four. I think that's six, five, five, three, six. Yep. Um, then we would do div negative equals 10. And then we will um, do string equals that. And we will return the string. Um, then we will do digit equals num or num divide equals, uh, digit equals num divided by div. Remainder um, equals num modulo div. Um, if digit no, num equals num modulo div. So that cuts it off. If digit, then string plus equals string digit. Um, else if padding um, is greater than or equal to step, I guess. String plus equals zero. And we'll worry about the sign in a second. Let's just try this. Where did I write this? Python test.py. Python 3 test.py. Okay, it's not ls, it's ls. String object is not callable. Oh. It would be um, out. Out, out, out. Can only concatenate. Okay, we have to do int there. Out plus equals string digit. All right. This is kind of working. Um, we'll also have wrote sign equals zero. Um, if num less than zero, num equals num. So let's just flip that around positive. Okay, that actually seems to help. So we flip it to positive. Now it doesn't work with zero though. Maybe we need to do another step. Seems like it's going to divide by zero though. No. Um, padding. I mean, that makes sense kind of. Um, or step equals zero. One. There we go. That's kind of weird. So then we do sign equals zero. If it's less than that, then we do sign. Um, then um, if wrote equals one, wrote equals one. This is getting to be a mess, but basically you want here 
if do sign, then we out plus equal that do sign equals zero. Can we put that before that? Six five five three six. All right. Hmm. That looks like it works. All right. So let's look at this code. Let's try and simplify this. This should be if digit. or padding or step equals one. This digit will be zero in that case, right? Um, so we have our right sign thing and we have some steps. So what we wanna do is we start up here with our do sign and write sign. If number equals, if number is less than zero, num equals num. Um, this should be else do sign equals right sign like that. Else right sign equals zero. Now, this is actually a problem though, because um, uh, we, uh, this is a problem because um, in assembly, there's actually like different things for signed and unsigned. So this will probably be like two different functions. So let's remove the right sign thing because they will be two different functions. Actually, no, we can pretend. Um, so. Yeah, so we'll just pretend we we'll just pretend here that um, sign is always set, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. What if it's like negative something? I guess we'll just have a mode for signed and unsigned. So let's say signed. If signed. Salt inhaler is food stamps improved. Oh dear. So if it's signed, then um, we want to convert to unsigned. And then we want to run. Okay, so if signed, convert to unsigned, run with um, num equals negative with num, write sign equals one. Else, right sign equals zero. Kind of. Um, this is more like if num less than zero. We'll just worry about this for now. Um, because in DOS or whatever, I guess in DOS, we would actually convert this to a signed number. So if number less than zero, we want to convert to signed, convert to unsigned, write a dash, there we go. And that's what the DOS logic would be. Then we have our divisor there. Let's see if this works. Do sign equals right sign. Mm-hmm. 
that, that's correct, I believe. Well, this isn't correct because it's always going to write the sign or whatever, but that's fine. This can be our logic. Um, we will write a number. We will specify if it's a signed number or not. And if it is signed, we'll write it with a dash. Um, that also means we don't have to like specify if it's signed. Uh, well, we would have to specify it in assembly, but let's pretend that that's something we set there. Um, Yeah, Python doesn't have signed numbers, so um, let's just remove the sign thing there. Maybe, no, let's keep it there, whatever, it doesn't do anything. So next we start with a div of 10,000 and our out, and we've chosen that right sign is doing that. So let's change do sign here to right sign. And so then we have our core loop here. Um, def loop um, digit position. Um, we'll start with a position of digit. Uh, padding. And I guess right sign or do sign let's call it sign and then we'll just return loop digit adding sign so digit would be five padding and then sign would be right sign And so what we would do each loop is, um, this shouldn't be digit, this should be place. Um, so we should do, if, if we have a digit or the place is greater than or equal to step or step equals one. So what we could do is if padding less than zero, padding equals one. And then we have if write sign here, we write the sign. Then we do div negative equal 10. What is div? Oh, that's the divisor. Yeah, div. And then we would also return loop place negative one div minus equal 10 padding and then right sign like that. And we also probably need the number. That's probably important too. And I guess out. Yep. Then we pass out to it. So we will do out and then if place less than zero, return out. Div minus 10. Local variable write sign reference. So this should just be sign. Num place div padding sign out. Turn loop place div padding write sign out. 
That should be num. That's weird. That's yeah, that should be sign. Okay, so that's close enough to what we want. Um, I think. No, it's not. That's better, but... Hmm. If place equals zero... Do I want to like, hmm, because padding seems to be like, for place is larger, so this should be like, if place less than padding. That should be negative one. I think that's correct. Six, five, five, three, six. But it puts a zero at the end, which means that the place of zero is, hmm. Let's print the places as we go. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. So if digit Why would this not be correct? Oh, maybe I need to up that. No. If padding, ah, uh, this should be less than zero, um, less than one. There we go, I think. So this is kind of how it's gonna work. We will have our um, loop code here. Um, in assembly, this will just be like, well, true. And then we will set up um, num or whatever. Um, place equals five. And we have div padding right sign. We'll change right sign to sign. And then out. And then we can just do this. Um, Place minus equal one, div negative equal 10. So this is probably more like the code we will have in assembly. We'll have this thing that will handle all the stuff at the first and then um, Yeah, so some sanity checking. If padding equals one, uh, less than one. Padding should always be one, I guess. Um, should it? Should padding ever? I mean, I don't know. It, it doesn't make sense for it to be that. So. What about padding of like six or something? Seven. 
That's not working. I want some big padding. Oh no, because of the divisor. Um, which is actually like 10 to the power of padding minus 1. No, 10 to the power of, you know. Um, so we have place equals 0. Um, let's put that there. So this is going to be our logic, I think. If digit adding greater than place, I think it should be that. Greater than or equal to place. So we have our digit there, which is we divide it. Then we have the leftovers. Um, then we have if sign, then we have plus equal that. We write that. Then we write the digit. Um, let's change this to what's the number? I think it's 60. Um, let's digit. Let's not use string there. Uh, is it 50 plus digit? Am I thinking of hex? 50. It doesn't work. I'll check the ASCII table. Yeah, men ASCII. Where does zero start? Um, it's 30. There we go. So this would be the uh, code. Um, so let's look on x86. Let's try and figure out. Uh, I'll have to take a break in a second. Um, I need some more tea, I think. Um, either that or I need to just crash and go to sleep. Um, we'll see. Um, let's find this. So div. Some, like, I, I wish there was like a div mod instruction. I don't know. Is there a better way to do this div? It's a lot of clocks. Div source. Um, it doesn't say. It doesn't say by what. Register 16 will take a lot of clocks. I don't know why there's like that in 38. 38. Instructions. Um, and there's like div table there. Um, let's set up fast division by 10. It's an approximation. Assume a 32 bit machine. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Something times 205. Well, I'd be multiplying anyway. Plus division. You also have multiplication. Ah, uh, there's all this math stuff. Is that, uh, let's just dig through some more instructions here. Ask you adjust for multiply. Two, 
two valid unpacked decimal numbers. I mean, that's how you get more digits, I suppose. You pack them in. We have our ASCII, add destination, bound destination. We could subtract, I guess. Although that's probably like slow. Probably don't want to do that. The carry flag, compare, decimal adjust for addition. Decimal adjust for abtraction. Subtraction. Division unsigned. Is there a signed division? Integer division. Integer multiplication. So IML or whatever. What is I IML versus div? Hang on. 165 to 188. Um, I don't know. I'm all that Hmm. There's mul there. I'm mul versus mul, so I'll have to search that up in a second. And there's just the bit operations. Well, this is what you get when you have to... Uh, single step. Sub, test, weight, exchange. Okay. IML versus MAL. Yeah, IML is for signed stuff. That's fine. All right, um, binary mass. Eighty eighty six divided by ten. AX by BL. Put the quotient and remainder in AH. Wait, so we only have 8 bit division? Oh no. Is this not 16 bit division? It'll be fine. Okay. It's fine. AX equals AX divided by BL. Let's see what flat assembler says. The upper half is different. Well, yeah, that makes sense, but... What?
Okay, let's search up x86 mile, which we'll be using. Let's search up IMAL, which we might also be using. Performs an unsigned. AL, AX equals AL times what? Okay. So I'm looking for div x86 div unsigned divide yeah i'm not multiplying i'm dividing aren't i right maybe if i can uh think about that properly unsigned divide by ax and ah is the remainder And DX is the remainder. Is this, do we have this register? F7? I would guess so. Otherwise you can't uh, do it properly. So we would do div mod. Um, so div mod. And then we have div divided by equal 10, which is another one. Which isn't good. There a way we could uh, solve that. We can't shift it, can we? Um, hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So I guess we'll have to do div mod there. And div mod there. Um, yeah, I guess that's what we'll have to do. I'm going to have to end this stream early because I'm pretty damn tired. Um, what I might do is I'll just come back a little bit later or tomorrow for a little bit more stream and then I'll just concatenate the videos, put them together, you know, join them. So I'll catch you back tomorrow. See you later, alligator. Hello friends. We're back. Um, yeah, so my, I had a quick day away, spent some time with my cat, not with my cat, um, took her to the vet. Looks like she's a little bit sick, but right now she's on my bed and she's relaxing. That's so all good actually. Um, and I managed to get some good sleep. Shh. Speech disabled. Um, okay, so let's go to our bot again and let's get back here um i do want to go into something first so if we go to our test.py this is the algorithm i figured out before and so yesterday after the stream i decided to just you know check out what else is available is my microphone a bit lower no it looks fine I think I'm just a bit quiet. Um, so I wanted to see, am I doing something obviously wrong? Because like I have one division, but then I have an extra division there. So I went to the internet, which I will just quickly enable the YGuard VPN thing. Um, and so I had a quick look online. Um, 
Also, the divide thing, the unsigned divide, puts the remainder in dx, from what I can see here. So dx is the remainder, ax is the quotient. Anyway, I looked up, I already have all this stuff open actually. Um, yeah, so this is, I tried to leave it like this, but I had a power outage. Um, so I lost where I was. But if we search up um, print number digits, and we look up some stuff on the internet, um, just to make sure I'm not doing anything silly, we get the same kind of uh, ideas. Although, a lot of them are really strange. It doesn't look like they'd output like a zero or something. I don't know. I saw one that used like an array or something. But I was thinking, how do you avoid doing a division by 10 multiplication? To avoid division by 10. And so we just do like divide by 10 using bit shifts or something like that. And their answer is you can't really do it. You can do like um, inexact stuff, like you multiply it and all that. This is all kind of a 32 bit stuff. And that's fine, but I was kind of confused as to like, why are they suggesting multiplication? Like that's basically a slur, right? If we open up our Intel um, IAPX manual, you'll see that it integer division and integer multiplication are in like the same league, like 154 clocks there versus 184 for division. And I'm like, what? And this is a bit weird. Um, so on basically every other architecture I can think of that has hardware division, um, like let's search up M68K clock cycles. Oh, that's weird. Um, so yeah, if we so if we look here, we have division takes 140, but multiplication only takes 70. So there's like a factor of two difference there. So what's going on here? Why is this like around the same? Because it turns out on like m modern architectures, multiplication is basically free. Um, because you can parallelize multiplication, but you can't parallelize division. Division is a serial process, multiplication is not. Um, but this is still weird, like why? So I found this article. Um, if we search up reverse engineering the arithmetic logic unit, we have like this diagram here, and this is kind of the actual, this is the logic unit of the um, 8086, the actual like die. Um, so, you know, this is the CPU itself. That's the registers over there. That's the ROM. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, that's an adder. So you can add stuff. Looks like a dungeon map. Yeah. And this is the arithmetic logic unit. And what those do in a CPU is take registers and do some mathematical calculation. And so here we have the flags and then um, I think there's, I don't know why there's 15 of them, I guess, for different things. And then one logic unit looks like this. And so the person, you know, showed the um, circuitry of it. So, you know, you have your, uh, your gates and then you make a binary adder and that's like that. And then they talk about how it gets implemented in silicon. Fascinating stuff. Um, and then they labeled all the stuff here. And so if we look at it, you have like the ability to shift stuff. You can do a carry. 
you can sum stuff, you can zor it, um, and that's the actual bus that it gets output to. But when I was reading this, I was like, where's the multiplication and division? Um, like, and so I then read down here that it doesn't support multiplication or division. The operations are computed in a microcode. So microcode is actually just um, a little programming languages that CPU uses to translate um, like instructions to the CPU thing itself. So here is the microcode on this ROM, or at least I think it's here. Nanocode, I'm not sure. Every CPU has microcode, right? It's just the way that you take um, the instructions and you map them to things to do in physical hardware. So another cool thing is we can actually look up the 8086 microcode. Someone has disassembled it. Um, yeah, so someone posted a high resolution p picture of the CPU and you can look at all the gates, too many gates. Um, oh yeah, I was right. So there is the microcode. So this section is responsible for the CPU doing stuff. This decodes an instruction. And then you have the stuff the CPU can do. Um, this is a very basic CPU. Anyway, you can see how there's like all the microcode here. Um, but you, from like a die image of this, you can actually just take the ROM and like physically extract it as bits. Um, and it's partially documented in a patent. Um, but this also does so show some cool stuff like, um, stuff that isn't handled by the microcode junk code um hidden features using rep or repney with a mole instruction negates the product that's weird um so what's actually interesting here is that sign multiplication and division works by negating negative inputs and then negating the output so you have to store the state. Um, they're talking about, you know, how do we do that? But it turns out they're using the um, rep prefix flag. So um, if you start with the flag already set, it will negate it. And that's pretty cool. Um, that's also how like all the rep and instructions get um, done it goes into microcode um just for fun let's have a look at some of the microcode um i hope this doesn't give me a virus let's look for mole i'm not sure what i'm looking at here I'm guessing it's something like this. Um, and you have all the flags and stuff. And this is what microcode gets mapped to. This kind of stuff. Um, all CPUs have microcode. Nowadays, like Intel and stuff have so much damn microcode, you can update it because they have bugs and CPUs ship broken all the time with broken microcode and then you have to update it in order to get things fixed. Um, but yeah, it looks like we actually see here with the multiplication, um, it negates it there to F1. And I guess it just runs IMLConf or something. I'm not sure, but it has its own little language. And if you want to learn a bit more about this, I would suggest looking at like, um, building an eight bit computer that series, um, this guy's series, he talks a lot about it, but 
um, essentially when it's time for him to um, implement some kind of assembly or whatever, he shows you how um, you use CPU control logic, which is a not found page here. Um, but he does that and it works by implementing microcode. And so you're probably thinking, is there a way to avoid having microcode? Um, and the answer is kind of yes. Um, if you have a transport triggered architecture, then instead of actually having microcode, you just tell the computer what to actually do, how to move stuff around the CPU. So you would actually be writing code that says, put data in this unit, this register, then do something. And then you would wait for it to be like that to be finished. And transport triggered architectures are fascinating to me because they're basically like microcode, but your software is the microcode. And so here's an example. You move a register to operand one of the ALU, then you move something to a trigger, and then you get the result after a few clock cycles. And there's a wild world based computer here, which is actually a pretty good um, example because you set up some gates um, and the only instruction is like to move stuff between registers and then wait for the hardware to change the register and move stuff back. And this also kind of gets into like the kind of very long instruction with computers because one issue with this here is that you have to count, you have to know how long to wait until the ALU is done with something. So if it takes like, let's see, um, like 184 cycles or something, you would have to like loop. You would have to loop or just wait 184 there. And you actually get this issue with very long instruction with CPUs. Um, which is kind of like transport triggered, but kind of a middle ground where you specify multiple instructions to do at once. I would have to find an example of it. Um, but yeah, so um, you specify a fl you specify that instruction and instruction in that one and that one, and you used multiple parts of the CPU. But the problem is, is that you now have to know the internals of the CPU, right? You have to know how many units there are, how long things take so you can wait for it. So you kind of get the worst of both worlds, if you ask me. Um, Intel, and I think HP, actually really tried hard to get this kind of thing uh, mainstream with the Itanium, which is gone now as of 2020. Um, and they really tried hard in order to get this mainstream um, where you would have computers that are programmed um, using a, multiple instructions at once. And again, the big problem with it was that, you know, it's very hard to schedule code around this because now the compiler has to know all these things about the CPU and then decide how to schedule them. So um, I don't know why I brought that all up. That's just a bit of a rabbit hole I went down, but that just explains why um, the multiplication and um, division box are exactly the same. Well, not exactly, they're kind of the same. They're in the same ballpark. Um, and that's just because like, well, they're done in software. They're not actual hardware. I mean, to be, to be like clear, this changes later, like newer CPUs, they absolutely are done in hardware. Um, so this would probably be, be like, I don't know, three cycles now, while this would be like, I don't know, 64 at the max. 
Um, so there you have your disparity, but not here. So that's exactly why we have, um, why I'm not going to bother trying to optimize this. Um, because unless we can do it just using shifts, um, you know, it's not great. And even then, um, we can't do multiple shifts at once, but just kind of to think about it. Um, if we had one and we shifted it by like 10, sorry, by like, I don't know, four, you'd have 16 and then you would minus six from that. And you get 10. Um, but could you do that for like a higher number? Could you, what happens then if you shift that by four? You would then have to minus 60. So then you'd have to do that to the original number too, like uh, minus six or multiply it by six. I guess you could then like, you could have a table for each. So this is also another way to avoid doing expensive stuff. If we shift something like by four and then minus six, we could times something by 10. So like um, maybe times something by 10. So like if we do um, five by four, I guess it's not gonna work, is it? Minus six, we would have to figure out what the difference is, 30. What's um, hex 30? What's 30 in um, hex? I don't know, I guess you can't really do that um, because the shifting is multiplying by two, I guess. So one times two. Um, times two, times five, times 10, and you get one, two, four. But yeah, probably not really a easy way to do that. I mean, it's kind of close enough if you think about it. If you only care about like the first digit, I don't know. Maybe we could actually do that. If you only care about the first digit, maybe we could like divide it by something um, to get it. So like if we take our number 65535 and we shift it right by five, eight, nine, 10, um, would it be 11, 12, 15, no, 14, 13, 12? No, um, I guess we couldn't do that for this number. But it looks like if we shift by 10, we would be able to kind of get like within the ballpark and then be able to divide it. Isn't that interesting though? You kind of have this ability to shift down and then I guess you could multiply more. But then what would be for the next digit? Like, um, we shift by 10, what about um, eight? We wanna get the five. Um, I guess you can't really, maybe that's just like a magic. Uh, we have a six. Oh no, we're looking for a five. So 10, we have six, five, five, three, six. We shift that by 10, we get 63. Um, oh, is that the upper value though? Yeah. So we would probably actually want to shift it and then look at the lower digits. So that's 55. So maybe we could change that to 99. I don't know. I'm way out of my depth here. 
Like if we do that, 999, 999. Shift by 10, we get nine. Shift by nine, eight. Let's say we want to do zero there, I guess. Shift by nine, eight, seven, six, is it seven? No, that's weird, okay. So I don't know, maybe you could also then like add the stuff. I don't know, shifting is not the correct way. You probably have to add some number or something. Um, there's a whole section, I think it's called um, Reprocrossible or something, I can't pronounce it. Anyway, we're not going to do that. And so now we're going to write some code. So we're going to have to write some tests. Which is probably the best thing to do at this point. Um, so let's go to our terminal. Let's go to this and we're going to type in, what was it? It's not parse, it's string. Yeah. So let's go vim edit bot edit drive C bot. Is it dev? No, drive C code bot um, string.nas and then drive C code test string dot um, test string. Okay, so Let's think about the first feature we want. We want, well, let's think about all the features. Um, so we want to test signed numbers eventually. That's one feature. Um, we would want to test padding eventually. Um, we want to test that zero is working. Um, so maybe let's start with that. And then we want to test that um, one works, one, two, one, two, three, four, Five, how many digits do we have? Six, five, five, three, six. I think there's five digits. That doesn't look right. Six, five, five, three. Yeah. So the maximum value is going to be six, five, five, three, six. And Roger will just test. We physically can't give out num uh, a number, can we? Um, so let's see. Um, string test. We want to check the string function. Mm -hmm. And we want to check that it is zero. And the string in will be um, data in dot in out equals zero. Um, and then we will say we want to check um, write num. Um, we will also have to pad pass like padding instructions and stuff eventually. Not sure how we'll do that, I guess, in the BP register. Yeah, we'd have to do that in the BP register. Um, that's okay. Or maybe the read register. We could temporarily put read as a number. Um, sure, let's have the number be, um, Read is the number and in out is the padding. There. So that's kind of weird, but whatever, it's registers. And I guess we could have length read be the padding. Um, and then I guess in out is whether it's signed. There we go. So we write that and right now we just want to see that it actually outputs um, a zero. Um, and then data out dot write plus equals one. And then write length right should be minus equal one. Um, so let's get this, we're going to be test write num zero. Check that we can write the zero correctly. Okay. 
And let's check that this works. So string. Right num has not been declared. So we need to declare that up here. And I think we need to also jump over to here and do write a number. SI equals number, uh, BX equals padding, X equals signed. Global write num. It's weird that I put, why am I putting labels after that? Like, um, not that, semicolons. So right now, right now we're just going to return. Expression must be a pointer. Um, so we will have to convert that. Read equals, um, I think that's a character. Expression must be a pointer. Expression type is character L value. So assert int here. I guess we have to, oh, that should be a, I think single quote to say that it's a character value. All right, so we're not writing anything. So what we wanna do now is just, um, I guess we want to also return if there's no space. But if we use write character, we know that's going to happen. So what we want to do is move AX um, zero. Then we want to do write character. And then in out is 48. Uh, we won't worry about that for now. Actually, if we push AX and then we pop AX, we can preserve it. Data in, in out doesn't equal zero. Oh, I changed it in two places instead of one. That's not smart. Don't do that. So red is not equal to 331. I'm going to have to change that up there. Okay. So next test. Um, test that we can write a one correctly. So let's do this. Um, test write one. We will probably have to create some kind of testing table for this. Um, so now we need to kind of actually do our single digit thing. So we will um, divide a um, divide, what is it? Um, SI by 10. So I think we need to move AX 10. I think it doesn't say here, um, exactly division unsigned. Yeah. So we need to do unsigned division. It doesn't say what registers it's going to use in this user manual because this user manual is garbage, but the assembly manual should be fine. Um, so somebody has evidently scanned this knowing in the future, I will need it. Div page eight. Um, it doesn't say, why would you not say that? Um, it takes, 
a memory address or a value, I guess. So it would be div 10. Div 10. Um, 86 div instruction. Let's just search that up. Divides the value dx. No, it divides. Divide ax. So maybe we should be putting the value in ax. Hmm, that could be a good idea actually. Yeah, so let's decide um, that ax is the number. So um, ax is actually in out. Data dot in out equals zero. We won't worry about the length of reading yet. And then data in out there. So right now we're going to push AX. No, we're going to divide AX by 10. And what does that give us? Um, <clears throat> The result is AX and DX is the remainder. So what we might want to do is to swap um, AX and DX because we will be dividing again eventually. And so DX is now going to be the number. Um, so I think, yeah, remainder would be um, what we use next. Um, we're going to push DX, I think. DX is the desk. We're not using DX, are we? That's weird. So we'll have to push it and pop DX. Any other registers it's going to squander? No. Um, so we do AX and then we're going to add to AX. I think it's hex 30. And then we'll see if this works. How you doing cat? Valid combination. 45. I think this would be, we want to divide the word by 10. Yep, my cat's okay. Invalid combination. Divide DX AX by 16. Divide DX AX by 16. Is that a memory address? Let's just see, so. Double byte temp equals DX AX. So is that an address divided by source? Maybe it's adding something to it. Let's just move DX one, two, three, four. Um, let's also see, so we want to divide by source and source is 16. Uh, we want to do a register of 16. Um, let's actually pop the base pointer there and we will divide, um, move BP 10 and we will divide by BP. And I just want this DX thing here um, just to make sure to, that I understand it, how it's affecting the results. And something bad has happened because it has frozen. Why would it freeze? Is it because I popped things in the wrong order? It's more likely than not. So let's do string. Still the same issue, that's okay. 
So we divide BP there. Change AX DX. But something is not right here. And we had this issue before when I was trying to divide something, I think. Um, so I'm just going to step through this in a debugger. I'm sorry. Um, what? What? Error. What? I just want to do a debug equals W. Oh, I have to set. Okay, quit. Set debug equals W string. All right. So let's run. Um, we want to run to the cursor and then we want to step into. And then we want to. No, we want to break it right now, I guess. So let's go window modules string and we want to break at right num. Let's do run, run to cursor. Okay, and let's look at our registers. So BP and DX are 10. BP is 10 and DX is 10. Uh, DX is one, two, three, four. Now, running do there manages to uh, fuck up the stack somehow. <laughs> somehow um what it switches our code segment and puts this in an interrupt so does this actually trigger an interrupt what's happened divide error so okay so dx must be zero i assume and this is my mistake I think. Um, okay, that beeped. So DX literally acts as high bytes. So in out doesn't equal zero, got 48. Um, I guess we should push AX2 and pop AX. And in this case, we get one. What should AX be? I guess we will just have data in dot in out equals data out dot in out. And just have it so it's always the same. So does this work? Yes, so we can write a number. So now we need to write um, a larger number. Um, so let's write one, two, three, four, five. We'll do that. This is the big one, everyone. One, two, three, four, five, correctly. One, two, three, four, five. And that is how many digits? Five, I think. Um, and then we do string compare, I guess. I don't know why I pressed the wrong button there. So we want to string compare um, out with one, two, three, four. And the length is five. Okay. So this should obviously not work really well, especially since I didn't change the name of the test, but it's okay. So length right doesn't equal 11 and we got 15. So obviously it's only writing one digit. So we need to add a loop. And so what we're going to do here is look at my 
prototype code. And so we're going to ignore all this. We're going to start with place is five. So we're going to move DX BP is going to be the start number there. We're going to move AX. Um, we can't use AX. We're going to have to put the place somewhere. We're not using. We're not using um, for this BX, are we? No. So BX. So move BX five. That's the number of places. That's the start. So this is the setup. And then we're going to have move DX zero to divide. Then we swap it around and we write it. So let's do loop. And now we want to compare BX zero, I think. Um, jump not zero loop. Um, let's do a quick review of what we're doing here. We didn't, we need to divide BP by 10. Oh no. That's gonna fuck everything up, isn't it? Uh, so this is where I think it'd be better to replace a division. Um, so let's see what multiplication is in x86. If it's just a simple instruction, then we could reduce some register pressure. DX AX equals AX times. Okay, so that's also gonna blast us. So can we multiply by 10 with shifts? I mean, we could multiply by 10 shifting left by three places, then we shift by one. So you would create two registers, then add them like that. I mean that I don't have the registers, I don't think. It's a distribute property. That's math stuff. Okay. So we have a, we have a <laughs> slight problem. Um, our divisor is, we need to divide that by 10. We could push the stack or whatever. Um, but I think, I think we have a, a little bit of a better idea. So let's do div table. Um, and we're going to just write a table of numbers, which I forget how to do. Um, edit drive C code. How do you write a table of numbers? Um, NASM, uh, write number. How to write a number NASM and code number. And that's equals. We've used equal before and we've used reserved bytes. But we want to do okay, so DB, we're going to declare word. Um so the first time it would be ten thousand, and the second time would be that, and then that, and then that, and that, and I think that. And so what we want to do here is use the place as an index. Um, which means we will have to move the base pointer to dot div table there.
Um, oh, yeah, because we would have to, we can't do two ar arithmetic adds, can we? Well, we, if we have the div table in a register, then it would work. We have BX is five. Um, AX and DX are taken. So BP is, we have a place, which in this case is also the offset. So do we have a register we could temporarily, not temporarily, but use as the place number? Oh, but we will also possibly be needing BX and um, other stuff. We're under some really tight pressure here. Um, we will use BP and, oh, some very tight pressure here. Okay. So what we could do is just um, move BP over here, div table. Um, then we add BP, um, BX, but we need to multiply it by two. And we can shift left BP, I think. Oh, I don't know about this, but it's certainly not great, but we don't have a register free because we also need two more registers. We need signed and we also need um, padding. So, let's see, padding. Padding will have to go on a register. We have BX and BP. Um, padding is going to be BX. Um, sign can be the upper bit of AX, I guess. I don't know. Um, BP will have to be something. We could just move it with div table but we also need um, the place. So BX is place too, which isn't appropriate. So we have sign, we have padding, we have place and divisor. We're keeping the divisor around, I think, no. This is the divisor is divisor. So num remainder um let's remove the BP stuff for now. So we have AX, DX, we'll worry about BX in a second. Um but we need a place. Just quickly put this back to how things were and quickly test if this has exploded everything. No, good. So we need a sign thing. Not sure where we could put that. Um, so we actually do have a register we can use for the div table. And that's the ES register. And so we would want to move ES div table, and then we would have to pop ES over here. And then what we would do here is we would move um, DX. Well, we don't want it to divide by zero ever. So let's just say 
uh, and we want the place, we can use the place um, place. We start with place. Let's just say one for now. Oh, this is going to have to be backwards. Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah, so place is one. So we want to get our divisor. Um, where's div? Yeah, so we want to div by um, ES plus a BX. And then we want to want to move ESBX by that first and exchange it around and add it. So let's try that. This should divide it by one, which should give the exact same answer and not break our tests. Invalid combination of operands. I guess we have to word, move the word there. Can we not move ES? Can we not set ES this way? Um, x86 move ES. Push div table pop ES. Okay, that fixes that kind of, and then we have to divide by the word at this memory address. Invalid effective address. Oh, that's right. We can't, we can't use um, ES for this. Hang on, let's go back to that page and just look at how we can do the displacements. Uh, bookmarks page 31, I think page 35. Yeah. So we can take a single index and then add a segment plus ES. Okay. So we actually can do this. I just need to put ES in front of it. So ES move word BX. And we divide it by that. And that fails. Now I'm going to guess that's because I messed up my pop, my pushing and popping. We push AX, we push DX, we push ES. Um, we also push to BX, but we didn't pop BX. Lots of pushing and lots of popping to be sure. Ooh. Okay, so that's failing at one four eight. So writing zero is failing. Because what? Out is not 48. So are we not right charactering? What's the issue here? Why is it not right charactering? We still have CX and DI. Are we using ES to write? Let's see, maybe we need to use a double index of BP plus whatever. Out zero doesn't equal, okay, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure I am, it's not writing it. Is this because right character needs to, oh shit. We're relying on ES here. Oh God damn it. All right, it's fine. We'll just use BP. Let 
invalid effective address. BP plus SI. BX plus SI. So it has to be. Mm, okay. Well, this is fine. We just need to shuffle around some registers. So what is SI even doing here? Nothing, right? SI. We're going to use SI for. Okay, so we have to use BX, BX, BP, and SI. So we have to use BX or BP and then SI. Um, so we need the place there and we need padding. So the div table pointer, BX, and so actually we only have like three registers anyway, so let's just. I mean, we don't need to pop SI or BX actually. Because we already use them. And what about DX? No. So. Uh, we also don't need to push SI. Yeah, no. Or ES. So AX, DX, VP. So mov um, BX5 place. We also don't need to push AX. I'll just deal with the registers being a certain way. So I don't know if Jeff Bezos is better. I'm gonna pour some more tea. So the remainder is DX and we have to have that. AX and DX are set. Um, BX can be the place. Um, SI. If BX is the place, okay, we have to decide, is SI going to be the place or is it going to be a pointer to div table? I think so. I think it will have to be a pointer to div table. So move SI div table, move BX one place. Um, and then it should be SI plus BX. And then we fail because the in out is the wrong value. What we might want to do is just move AX to zero. Maybe. AX should be zero actually by the time we're done dividing everything. Um, so yeah, AX can be zero. Then we would be testing the length read. So length read is also not zero, it's one, which is true. So data out dot length read equals zero. Font awesome, what did font awesome do? Be right back. All right, I'm back. Maybe using fonts for images is not the right idea. Okay. So length read. Why is this erroring? Because I'm not moving zero to the place. Um, data in dot read, which is the pointer. Um, we'll have to also move that to zero.
It's fine, I believe you. Data in dot read does not equal three three eight. Got zero. What? Maybe I need to set data out. Like that. My test framework is a little confusing. I'll have to refactor it later. Okay. And so now we're back to the issue of our test at 172 failing over here. So now it's time to loop. So loop. Um, uh, decrement. Um, place. Jump if place is a zero. Jump if uh, jump if not zero loop. Let's see if that works. BX is place and we'll start that with five, I guess. And then we will only call this if compare AX zero jump not um, zero skip. And then we'll create a skip. Yeah. So it won't print if it's a skip. Um, Uh oh, because now we're hitting the complex logic here. Um, we don't want to print if it's a zero unless the place is one. How could we? Do we have any neat tricks to solve this? Oh, probably we should compare AX to zero. Then we hmm. So this will not print a zero. In fact, it will skip over it. In fact, we need to also subtract AX thirty there. Hmm. So let's look back at our code. Yeah, I understand what that would look like, Kaz. I guess I'll do it on stream. Let's say we don't want Um, overrides, fonts, no fonts for you. So every web page has to use a font now. So if we go to font test on Google, look, it's whatever font we want. Um, then if we go to font awesome, what's it look like? It looks kind of okay to me. Oh, classic font, awesome. All right, let's find classic. Classic, classic font, awesome. Looks okay to me. Have a quick look. Rotate right. Font Awesome 6 Pro. 
I might have to restart if Firefox is letting them use the, my own, their own fonts. Or maybe the new Firefox has some exception. I don't know. Hmm. What font is this? Helvetica, Arial. That's not what I asked for. Overrides, fonts. Oh, there's different fonts for different writing systems, I guess. I don't know, maybe this is broken. I'll try Mastodon. Looks fine to me. Anyway, let's continue on. So, maybe you need to reinstall your computer or upgrade Firefox or something. So we have our logic here. We have if digit or padding greater than equal place. So this is how we solved it. So we need to, if digit, um, okay, so we need to, that's what it looks like for you. Am I going to click that link on stream? That looks like a sus as heck link. That looks fine to me. Oh, well, there. They have messed up house and star and weird stuff. But like, I guess maybe I'm not looking at the ones that are like Unicode stuff. Okay, let's get back here. So we have two conditions here. Social media uses star and heart for everything. You can't click them. I it's I get it. Does multiplication, sorry, does division set the flag if it's zero? Does it set the zero flag? I need to know. The zero flags are undefined. This is the one time I would have needed the zero flag. Okay, so we compare AX and zero. If it's not zero, then we write. Otherwise we will skip. This is a bit weird, isn't it? Um, then we compare BX zero. I mean, I just used the, like the, the installation of Firefox. It's fine. Um, so if digit or padding is greater than or equal to place, so padding should be one. So if padding is so one greater than or equal zero. So if place is zero, we should always print it. And so then we write So we write if it's not zero or if the place is zero, we write. But it should be one there, right? The place is one and we should write. We always write one. Um, and then we compare BX one, jump equal. So then we write it and then we go skip. So otherwise we're going to have to, um, Jump not equal skip, I guess, like that. And then we write it. So that should be fine, I think. It 
data in length right doesn't equals 15 got 11. That's interesting. That's on 161. Hmm. Oh, because the place, okay. Jump. So we want to do jump. Um, jump if it's not, um, jump if it's greater than or equal to one. Thanks, right, 150. Okay, so now zero is broken. Why is that? Everything's broken. If it's zero, it's not gonna print it here. I mean, if it is zero, if it's not zero, it'll skip it. If bx is equal to one, it will, if it, if it, uh, ah. If bx is equal to, that should be two. This should be jump greater than. And then we get a failure on 161. And what's the issue here? It writes, it, it writes too much padding. Okay, well, hmm. It shouldn't. Why would 161 fail? We set the value to be one. And place is five. So we divide it and we check the number of times it divides. So first it should be like 10,000 or something. And then we do um, compare if it's zero. If it's not zero, we always write it. But if it's, if we're in the first place, then we always write it too. All right, I think my cat's starting to go off. Um, then we decrement BX. Is this table messed up? Do I need to do that? SI plus BX, so plus zero. Um, so one, two, three, four, five. So it's writing five digits, I think. Yeah. So what if we, hmm. Compare BX one, jump greater than. That's a subtract. So we, we subtract BX one from BX. Um, let's just say we always print um, if BX is one. Jump not equal one. No, because it, it could be greater than one. But if it's five, we need to skip. So five is greater than one. Um, is one greater than one? No. All right, we might have to, let's just mess around a little bit. Let's just try jump less than, jump not equal. Maybe we could try jump greater than or equal.
Okay. So it looks like jump greater than was actually kind of working. Wait, what is AX? So we divide the word. AX is the result, right? And DX. Are we looking at the wrong values? Hang on a second. Divide. A AH is the remainder. A um, sorry. AX is the quantinate. DX is the remainder. We do the division and we put the remainder in AX. That's wrong. It should be um, over here, I think. Out zero dozen equals 49 got 48. DX is the remainder. AX is going to be the proper value. Let me add AX. And then what we should do is move DX to AX. So we move the remainder. Okay, so this is at 161. S right number one. So one is now fucked up. All right. Ah. Let's step through this in our head. We move DX to zero and we divide it by um, 10,000. The result is in AX. And the remainder is in DX. We compare the result and then the place. We add 30 to AX. We write character if that's true. Um, we decrement the place and then we set um, the new value to be AX. I think that should work. So the output is 48. We're gonna have to, we can't avoid it. We have to use a debugger. All right, so let's do string <coughs> modules. Let's go to string. And let's go down to here. Um, window modules string, and we will run to the cursor. Data registers. So we have the div table here. Um, we move DX. So we're dividing what? We're dividing. Um, SI plus BX. So let's go to data, memory at SI plus BX, 73. Um, hmm. I don't know if that's true, right? Um, I forget how to close windows. I think it's like control F5, control F4, um, F4, no, control F4, yeah. All right, the SI is D38. And BX is five. D three eight. Oh shit.
I need to specify the index using the code segment. Can we override that? So it's CS because the code segment is what we're doing there. Don't reject their request, you coward, you nonce. Okay, one six one. So let's go back to the debugger. That's one bug. That's one bug. Um, okay. Window modules string. <laughs> you follow them instead. Why? Why would you do that? Run to cursor. All right. So let's see what is at um, code segment SI plus BX. That's still not the correct place. I don't think. Perhaps it is. Um, zero zero sixty four. Oh, that is the place, maybe, or is it sixty four zero zero? No, it should be zero zero sixty four. Hmm. Oh, shit, is my table not aligned? Do I need to align it? Am I an idiot? I shouldn't have to. Oh, I, I think you can do like unaligned words. So move SI. Show me that. No. Um. We want to go to memory at code segment SI. Okay. So we have zero zero. Then we have plus BX. Okay, that actually looks sane. All right, so where are we at? We want to divide it and the division should be zero. Yep. If it's zero, let's check what BX is. Five, so if it's greater than, we're gonna skip. Okay, now we have the remainder, which is eight, which is zero. Skip. Um, BX, we're going to get down to one. And then this should work. We write one. We did it. Okay, so let's run back to the next time we run this code. Okay. So this time we have the number one. We divide it and we get zero and DX is one. So we compare this all, we don't write it and we swap them around again and we try again. So it should eventually, yeah, all right. So after a little bit, we've managed to get, no. Okay, AX is one, and we write it. But BX is two, what? BX is two. BX is two, Kaz. 
How did we get to one with BX being two? I don't understand. One. We divide by one. Something's fishy here. I think Hmm. Okay. I think this design might actually be kind of bad because we divide by one at the end. I'm not too sure. Ideally, if BX is one, it should just write a character. So what if we do this? So BX is going to, we set it to four. You turn that down. We always write the character so we can remove this comparison here. We jump zero, skip. So we always write a character. So BX, how many did it write there? We're at 172 again. So I fixed the case of one. And this wrote only a few. So perhaps we need to loop a bit more. I think five. Okay. So we do place five. I mean, we'll do place four. Let's remove this stuff because I kind of know what we're doing here. So we move dx to zero, we divide it by four. Um, so one, um, zero, one, two, three, four. And if it's zero, we just skip. And then um, we go to place three and two, and then one. And then that's skipped which is fine. Um, and then we just always write at the end. And that should be fine. That saves multiplying the last, the only reason I really want to do that is to save dividing the last number because that's just like, why? And that also covers the common case of the zero. So why is this not working? It seems to loop forever. Oh, it doesn't. Um, length right doesn't equals 11, we got 13. So 16 minus 13 is three. So it's printing three digits and it's writing three things instead of that i guess we will have to look at the loop in a second
We'll have to like check one last time. Um, so let's just try and figure this out. So we divide it and if AX is zero, we skip it. So we never print leading zeros. So the first one should be one. We write one. Then we write a two, then we write a three, and then we write a four. So what happened here? Let's set the debugger up. Um, and we'll do, what, what am I thinking of? Um, we're going to do string. Let's just try and go to a function and we're going to look for um, right num. Okay, that didn't work. Code, modules. Okay, let's go to right num. And we will run the cursor, data registers, run the cursor again, and then run the cursor again. We have 3039. So let's see, we divide 3039 is 12345, and we're going to divide it by some factor. And that gives us 7B and 2D. That's dividing by like a hundred. Fuck. I know what's happening here. My table, my table. Okay. Using the place is not going to work. We need to shift it right after each loop. So we start there and we'll do it backwards. I was, I must have like, I, I was specifying a byte address, not a like word offset. The offsets are bytes, not words. I mean, unless I can multiply by two, which I cannot because we're on 8086. Okay, so we do SI. I guess we can just use BP there. We use BP as the div table, and then we start there. Then when we do a decrement, we're going to shift, we're going to add BP2. There. All right, this should work. Um, we don't want to set the debug. We just want to do string. Null assignment. God damn it. What? <laughs> this should be pop base pointer. No, I was moving the base pointer to zero at the end. I swear. <gasps> it works. We managed to print it, we managed to write a big number. Look at us. So now we want to test with padding. Zero, zero, three, four, five. Zero, zero, three, four, five. If 
four, five. So we want to set the padding here to be, I guess we'll set it to be, I don't know, five. Add to five digits. Um, zero, zero, zero. We can pad a number. So we need to specify the padding as the SI. So I think padding would be, um, no, the read length would be padding. Uh, that in length read equals five. Which kind of makes sense if you think about it. You know, we're reading a certain amount of digits. So let's have that fail first. Test write number one, two, three, four, five has not been declared. Is that because I just, yeah, I just wrote over my test instead of copy pasting it. Um, okay. Okay, no, no. Right. Uh, multi digit number. One, two, one, two, zero. And so this should fail because we're only going to be writing um, three, four, five. Yeah. So you're expecting more digits and this is on 86. So now you want to do um, we want to uh, so we're going to have to subtract one from padding um, sub um, bx, but we're using place for bx. Ah, that's why I couldn't use it. Um, I guess we could move it around or we could replace BX with SI. Yeah, let's do that. So we move SI and that will be the current place, and then we will have to sub BX one or decrement BX um, place uh, padding replace minus one. And then we will have here, um, we want to compare So if it's, if it's, um, if AX is not zero, we will write, and then we will compare, um, what would we call it? I think we want to compare, um, BX and SI. And if BX is greater than or equal, to SI, we will jump to, um, if G, if, if, um, the padding is less than the current digit, we will skip. All right, let's try that. That, did that actually work first try? It seems so. Um, hmm. What about four? Check that we can, uh, check that adding partially, I guess. So this will be zero, three, four.
And then I guess we'll have unnecessary padding. Check that we don't unnecessarily pad a number. The length read should be two, and we should always write three digits there. Um, did that just work? It looks like it worked. Unless I've like managed to really mess up my tests. All right, um, so we have numbers here. I guess also case one. I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's less than whatever. So, hey, Kat. Actually, I just had a interesting question what if we add a padding that like is really big but we we're not going to use this padding must be um padding should be between five and zero I guess, I don't know. Optionally adding someone in my roof. It's probably fine. Um, so padding may be zero pads to five. Um, pads to five digits. So what if we specify, what if we specify something greater than five? Um, then it would end up always padding, I think. Yeah. Pads up to five digits there. Um, so now you want to do the signage. And this is actually just going to be quite easy. Um, because it's just going to be a wrapper that wraps around and negates it. So I'm just going to be right back. I got to use the bathroom. Oh, I'm back. So our right number should be right and signed number. So it's, I won't bother changing it. Um, but now we want to have right num signed writes a signed number and so all we want to do is i guess um jump to write num at the moment what are you reading stop reading stuff So write num signed, and then we'll do a one, two. So we'll write one, two. Um, 
I guess I'll write zero, one, two. Um, unfortunately, this is going to succeed the first time. Checks that we can write a signed number. One, two, and we want to pad to three digits. We don't put a plus in front of sign numbers for some reason. It's kind of weird. Test write num signed. Um, signed. Test write num signed. And then we'll have to add uh, write num signed here. So, um, we now want to do negative. I guess we can put a dash. No, I don't think you can put dashes in functions and see. I don't know. Um, right, uh, negative number. And so this should add a thing in front of it. And so we don't actually need to carry a signed flag because it always prints something. We can just write a dash and then call um, the thing. So let's see. Um, move AX, what's the hexadecimal or, um, I don't know if you can hear that on stream, but that dude is partying on top of my roof. Okay. Move AX. We want to move it. We would have been best friends in school. I don't know about that. I wasn't. I don't think I was ready for the world when I was in school. I should have like been able to like start school when I was, I don't know, 20 or something. Um, so. I got my whole microphone set up so I have like really low background noise. And then I'm like, why can't people hear my background noise? The, the typical. All right. Compare AX zero. Um, jump. Jump greater than right num. Otherwise, we just jump greater than or equal. Otherwise, we're going to move AX. Then we're going to neg. It. Um, then we're going to. We're going to call right character, then we will neg AX and then jump to right num. Got 10. What do you mean you... Doesn't equals 12, you got 10. How do we do a signed compare? Is that the issue here? Move AX. Zero two D. Oh, um, I need to put AX somewhere. What's a register that um gets clobbered? Uh, I guess BP. Um, move BP AX. Move AX BP. In out doesn't equal zero. Got zero. What? What? Data in, in out doesn't equal zero. Got negative 12. In out doesn't equal zero. How is that possible? It should always be zero. Oh.
data out dot in out should be zero. Why did, wait, is that a failure? Have I not been testing this? It shouldn't be preserving numbers. In out doesn't equal zero, it got negative 12. I see. So I'm somehow preserving the AX register. I wouldn't bully you in school. All right, so. I'm just a little bit confused because we always jump to right num we call right num signed. I don't understand how we are ending up still with an AX of negative 12, especially if we negate it here. We are going to have to enter the debug. God, having to pay for school lunches is kind of weird. Um, I guess having to pay for anything is kind of weird. Why is money a thing? Okay. Run to cursor. I'm stealing it, but wouldn't you just buy soy milk instead? Okay. So we loop there, we write 12, and then we pop. We move AX to be zero, and then we return. And that's fine. So... Okay, I don't know why I did that. Um, so we now want to go to our code modules string. We want to go run to cursor data registers and then we want to run to cursor again. And we have FF4. I don't know if they give kids um, the option of soy milk. I don't know. It seems like you should. What, what do lactose intolerant people do? Just not drink milk. So we jump if it's greater than or equal to right num. It's not. So we move BPAX. We move AX2D. We write the character. That updates our destination stuff. We move BAX back. We get the C. We get C there. And then we should always end up with AX. We loop once. And AX, wait, why, why is it looping so much? How's it possibly failing? How is this possibly failing? Test 263, in out does not equal zero, got negative 12. Is it 236? 236, in out does not equal zero, got negative 12. In out does not equal zero. Data in dot in out does not equal zero. That's so confusing that it writes that. Hang on. Data in out does not equal zero. Oh, that. Hmm. 
data out dot in out should equal zero. What? Uh, what if we say that it should equal negative 12? Data length red doesn't equal zero, got three. What the heck is happening here? What has happened? What? Now it's saying that the length red is not equal zero. It should, it got three. Something is seriously wrong here. I was homeschooled briefly. Um, but then I did like uh, remote schooling, which was fine, but it's definitely a complex topic. What the heck is going on here? Okay, what if we always jump right num? Okay, so that kind of works. What if we just negate right num or whatever? I'm messing up the stack with the base pointer. Shit. Ah. That's what the issue is. I guess I'll just mess up SI instead. Okay, so we have negative numbers now. So, it's been uh, like, I think three hours, maybe three and a half. I'd have to, let me just quickly check. Um, let me check how long the previous stream went for. Two hours, so it's been, how long has it been? Three hours, yeah, so I'll have to finish up here. Wait, no, it went for two hours, it's been four hours. Oh no, I'm way over time. Um, so I guess we'll have to figure out what to do next time. Um, let's see, we'll have to replace our SN printf and stuff here. Let's remove all this junk. We will still have to do push string and pop string, but we will be able to start actually doing some string passing and writing next time. So this might end possibly the chapter of doing low level dirty work. Um, so I'll see you all later. Hmm. <sighs>